Um, we have two readings uh, this morning. Um, and the first is taken from Genesis chapter 39. Some of you that are new and you're coming into the Wrecking Yard ministry and you're wondering why do we stand. If you're able, if you're not able and you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, this um, Holy Bible uh, uh, is, is, is a, uh, a gift from God to you and I. And uh, the blood of martyrs. Uh, has been uh, spilled, uh, that we can have this in our own lives, our own homes. Even to this day, there are men and women all over the earth um, that if they're caught with uh, this Bible, it will cause them death. It can cause them to be uh, uh, disassociated with family members. The Old Testament is, uh, if you will, uh, replete with uh, God's people uh, when the uh, priest would open up the uh, Torah or the first five books of the Bible, the men and women would bow down in such reverence and honor uh, for God's word. They did not uh, look at this as the words of a man, but it was the word of God, the, uh, the Ruach, the breath of God himself given to you and I, uh, de depicting his heart, his desires. This is how we know him. This is how we learn of him. This is how we know what God loves and know uh, what God hates. And it does deserve your, your honor. It does deserve your allegiance. It does deserve uh, your time. And so, uh, again, that's why we uh, ask for you to stand if you're able. And, and even if someone does it next to you, well, you stand before God with that. And so, uh, Genesis chapter 39, verses 3 through 5. And again, the title um, of this presentation is, um, is God linked in? Is God linked in? And the subtitle of What God's Favor Isn't. What God's Favor Isn't. Genesis chapter 39, verses 3 through 5. Uh, the Bible uh, says, uh, Now when Joseph's master saw that the Lord was with Joseph, uh, Potiphar made Joseph... Uh, uh, was, uh, saw that God was with Joseph and God prospered him in all that he did. Watch now verse 4. And Joseph found favor in Potiphar's sight and became his personal attendant. And Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his household and entrusted him with everything he owned. Verse 5. From the time that he put Joseph in charge of his household... And all that he owned, watch now, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's household on account of Joseph. For the Lord's blessing was on everything he owned, both in his house and in his field. I want to just show you quickly a couple of things. One is that uh, Joseph found favor first with God and also with his master uh, within the prison system. He found favor with a man by the name of Potiphar. Now, just because that favor was upon Joseph, your Bible declares here that the Lord not only blessed Joseph, but blessed Potiphar and his household because of the life of Joseph himself. I want to declare to you, uh, beloved Christian, that when God's favor is upon you, uh, that there is going to be released a blessing upon those uh, within that company, those within that business, those within that home, those within every place, the soles of your feet and the workings of your hands take you. You and I have to realize that God's favor can be placed upon you in measures and in levels. Again, we have taught you uh, the last three hours of part one and part two that you and I can grow in the favor of God and in favor with man himself. And we have been given, you and I, the strategies and the steps in your Bible on how to do such. Wherever you go, you are related releasing a blessing to that company, to that employer, uh, to that neighborhood, to wherever you walk, there is God's favor upon your life. 
The last scripture is found in Genesis chapter 40, verses 5 through 23. I won't read all of that passage. Genesis chapter 40, verses 5 through 23. Reading here out of the King James Version. Now, uh, I'll try to uh, fill in some of the back layers of this uh, particular uh, um, chapter and it says here in verse 5 and they dreamed a dream both of them uh, the butler uh, the chief butler and the chief baker that were under the uh, uh, management of Pharaoh in Egypt they both dreamed a dream both of them each man his dream in one night each man according to the interpretation of the dream the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, were bound, thrown into prison. Verse 6. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them. And behold, the chief butler and the chief baker were sad. Verse 7. And Joseph uh, asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of the uh, Lord's uh, house, saying, Why are you looking so sad today? Verse 8, And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not all interpretations, <laughs> look at that, beloved, you should underline that, belong to God himself? Tell them to me, I pray. Verse 9, And the chief butler told uh, the dream to Joseph and said to him in my dream behold a vine was before me and in the vine there were three branches and it was as if though it had budded and blossoms shot forth and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes verse 11 and Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and I gave the cup into uh, Pharaoh's hand and Joseph said unto him this is the interpretation uh, of uh, it the three branches are three days yet in three days a uh, Pharaoh shall lift uh, your head and restore you unto your position and place in the palace uh, and uh, up upon his hand and the former uh, manner in which uh, you were uh, that uh, uh, that butler verse 14 key verse beloved key verse verse 14 Joseph said won't you remember me think upon me uh, when uh, when this takes place and show kindness unto me I pray Please make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this prison. Verse 15, for indeed, uh, Joseph said, I was taken out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also I have done nothing that should be put me uh, in this prison. Now I pause there quickly, beloved. You know God's favor <laughs> was upon Joseph, and yet here he was incarcerated. Uh, there are some uh, people uh, watching even in a prison, and I want to tell you today that even though you're incarcerated, that that is not necessarily a disadvantage for God's favor to be bestowed upon you. And Joseph is one here that is a model uh, to show us how to receive that let's push here to verse 20 and it came to pass on the third day which was Pharaoh's birthday he made a feast unto all of his servants and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among his servants and he restored the chief butler into his uh, position once again and he gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand Verse 22, but Pharaoh hung the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted. Key verse, verse 23. Yet uh, did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Did not remember him, but forgot him. And so let's pray now and ask God to, uh, uh, to anoint his uh, holy word again. Lord, again, I thank you uh, for the rich opportunity and privilege it is to uh, endeavor to share your holy word. 
uh, oh God, I know uh, and have read that even in the book of Luke chapter 4 that Jesus waited to be anointed uh, by you before his first uh, message, his first sermon. And I pray, oh God, that I have tarried uh, well and long and have waited and hopefully by your mercy that you would anoint again a man of clay lips and a clay vessel uh, this day for your glory and your name's sake and for the beautiful uh, elect of your bride in Jesus' name. Won't you grow us today and strengthen and widen and deepen each of our lives today, oh God? That we would not uh, leave our time together the same. That there would be something changed within us and a new fire that would begin to rage for your glory, for your kingdom. Oh, in the name above all names, Jesus Christ, awaken uh, your ten virgins, oh God, and fill us uh, with oil once again. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Is God linked in what God's favor isn't? Uh, beloved, we have uh, mentioned in part one, um, what is the difference between God's favor and God's grace? God's favor is mentioned over 140 times in your Bible, and I would uh, encourage you, if you uh, don't understand the uh, difference uh, between God's favor and God's grace, that you go back and, and, uh, and re-listen to it. Uh, we have mentioned to you in part two, seven benefits of God's favor. And today uh, it is a part three, again, of a theme uh, entitled, Is God Linked In? Is God Linked In? Beloved, your Bible declares that we are living in uh, an age of such technology, uh, uh, such uh, knowledge. Um, the acceleration is phenomenal. Uh, that knowledge, that technology, uh, uh, that release of, uh, of, of that arena uh, has been prophesied by Daniel in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4. He said in the end times that knowledge is going to increase and continue to increase. Um, many believe that that technology, that knowledge within the earth that you and I are living in is doubling every year and a half. And so the computer that you and I just bought and the phone you and I just bought in a year and a half is going to be something new, something greater, something faster. Uh, but again, be encouraged because God in Isaiah 11, 9 says, not only is earthly knowledge going to continue to accelerate and increase, uh, but my uh, spirit and my word and my movement upon the earth uh, is going to increase as well he said that there is going to be uh, a knowledge and increase uh, of the Lord himself there is going to be a continuation where the Lord's name will be moved into the nations and so be encouraged that even though we see the technology and the knowledge increasing uh, around our lives and as uh, in one sense marvelous is it as it can be that God's knowledge of Jesus Christ is continuing to move in the very aspects of the nations that you and I uh, are living in today. Well, what kind of increase is happening? Many of you already know I'm 63 and I can give a little history, which I won't take too much time. Uh, but you can see that technology and social medias and the capacities to connect with anyone, anywhere, uh, has now been made available to you and I. There is, uh, 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 there is Instagram, there is social net, uh, uh, there is a host of these uh, kinds of uh, uh, applications to connect with people. Facebook, uh, Snapchat, uh, uh, Instagram, and the list goes on and on and on uh, in terms of this realm uh, of technology and knowledge increasing. Uh, let me just move over here and share with you that even with what is known as uh, uh, what I call the great space race, that now you're seeing uh, the trillionaires of the earth that you and I live in. Uh, now there is a race to space. 
technology, knowledge is increasing, and now uh, you have Elon Musk uh, endeavoring to, uh, to, to take uh, 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 rocket ships uh, uh, to Mars and uh, to establish uh, uh, areas uh, of satellite dishes called Starlink. I'll touch that in a minute. Why is there a proliferation amongst the trillionaires and billionaires of racing to space? Is it just ego? Why did Jeff Bezos, uh, just a handful of uh, 10, 11 days ago, uh, flew up uh, into his, uh, uh, his uh, 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 rocket ship called the Blue Origin? Why did he do that? Uh, Richard Branson in uh, Virgin Galactic, uh, uh, and Mark uh, Zuckerberg and uh, uh, Facebook, Tim Cook of Apple and uh, um, uh, Sudan uh, uh, Pakara in uh, Google, all uh, now are on the uh, pathway for the exploration of uh, space. I want to share with you uh, briefly uh, one of the dynamics happening within the hour that you and I live in concerning the race to space and what's happening. I'm not going to, it would take probably two hours to share all of those things, but let me just begin with what is happening with what is known here by Elon Musk, uh, known as Starlink, and what is known with uh, uh, his uh, movement in that particular realm. Uh, of, of what is taking place. Now, uh, he just did a conference in May in Seattle here, and I'll just tell you briefly what is taking place and why uh, the trillionaires and billionaires are endeavoring to explore uh, space in such a rapid uh, capacity. And, and beloved, let me just tell you, this is a global race. It begins here in 1998 with a new company called Iridium, and it launched a new satellite communications service. Okay, and uh, in uh, 10 months, it had to file Chapter 11 for bankruptcy. 20 years later, Elon Musk is actually endeavoring to move in the same area of that particular space. His company is Starlink. And he is, uh, he is creating satellites on an assembly line. Uh, SpaceX is his brand, and Starlink is one of the uh, uh, items of vision where he is now launching satellites uh, into the orbital patterns of, of what we know as uh, space. Uh, the U.S. government, the Federal uh, Communications Commission of the United States of America, is actually helping to fund um, this uh, transportation and venue and vision of Elon Musk. They are, they are undergirding the millions and billions of dollars for what Elon Musk is trying to do with Starlink. Starlink, again... Uh, has also received 500 over 500 uh, million dollars worth of subscribers and and uh, reservations. Well, what is he beginning to do? Uh, Elon Musk has a desire and a vision that he would be able to control and oversee uh, the internet. You see, not from Earth and having the challenges here, uh, but from space. That Elon Musk believes that whoever can control the internet from space, uh, they are going to have the power and the control that actually over nations. Thus, China, Russia, um, the Middle East, a host of places uh, that uh, do not allow uh, internet to come into their uh, particular firewall. Uh, this would eliminate that because now the satellites that are being launched into space, now they cannot be stopped into any place anywhere in the world. You could be on a barge in uh, the Suez Canal and you could have internet because of Starlink and the multiplicity of satellites that are being launched in space. There is a race for space and Jeff Bezos and uh, Richard Branson and Mark Zuckerberg and uh, 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 the Google uh, uh, CEOs 
And uh, Tim Cook realized that if this takes place and Elon Musk is now in control uh, over a, a global internet capacity, it's going to shut down their capacities themselves to actually be able to move unrestricted within uh, the world that we, you and I live in. Do you see the power of what's taking place in terms of knowledge and technology increasing? Uh, to, to add to this, Elon Musk and, and what is already being delivered from the satellite uh, internet and power, it's already underway, 5,000 uh, uh, people, it's already being tested there. Uh, the speed is uh, already uh, four times faster than the fastest internet speed, Singapore, to this day. He said it's going to be such an acceleration of speed it's going to be such an acceleration of access that anyone will have access in the world to this internet. And Elon Musk wants to be uh, the individual that can actually control that. China is watching this and they too are endeavoring to beat uh, uh, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and, and uh, Richard Branson and a host of those now that see the value of being able to broadcast internet from space as opposed to what is here. Can you imagine now the firewall that China has and they're not allowing any information from the West to come in or anywhere uh, that hasn't been sifted through their firewall. Now, this is coming right in to China and the people uh, to bring a host of things, uh, uh, righteous and unrighteous. Can you imagine Russia and the host of nations? Again, it is a race to space, a race to space. It is a disruptor that is happening right now in the very framework where you and I are living in. And uh, we see here, according to uh, uh, in May, Elon Musk said that it won't matter where that individual is, the Sahara Desert. They'll be able to receive internet. And the speeds are going to be at one gigabytes. Uh, 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 it, it, it's going to be a phenomenal uh, that is going to take, uh, going to take place. Now, uh, uh, he declared you won't uh, have Facebook uh, muting you or Twitter with uh, uh, Jack Dorsey and, and uh, not allowing freedom of speech to take place. If Elon Musk wants that to happen, he can allow that to happen. Now, you see what that is doing within the capacities of Facebook, uh, Tim Cook and Apple and, and Google and a host of those that there won't be necessarily again uh, any interruptions of free speech in the world and an opening of what's happening uh, in reality to nations like China, Russia and the host goes on and on. And so, again, it's, uh, many of the uh, satellites have already been launched. Uh, he is launching them in every nine days, and he is, uh, uh, it is expected uh, to be able to actually have U.S. customers opened totally here in the next two to three years. The next two to three years years you'll be able to have this uh, if things continue to go as processed and so he is sending out uh, uh, hundreds of satellites that will cover the earth and uh, is already in process of doing that I'm going to uh, ask uh, Miss Tina to put up a, uh, a uh, picture so that you can see um, uh, hopefully uh, a, an earth that is somewhat darkened and blackened out uh, and yet you can see the, the uh, satellites uh, that are around the earth that you and I live in and people are able to access internet anywhere, any place, any time as opposed again to the restrictions uh, that are uh, placed upon them uh, in whatever uh, area, the Emirates, uh, uh, Oman, a host of, I mean, a host of places. Uh, this is going to have tremendous impacts uh, and disruptions within that community. Now you see again why uh, 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 Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, uh, who has uh, three billion followers and, 
and Apple uh, and, and uh, Bill Gates and the, and the billions of dollars, watch, that are being poured in now to the race to space. What is increasing in our life, Daniel said, what is taking place? It is this phenomena uh, that is happening at such a rate uh, that it's incomprehensible to even think about. And so, again, that's one of a, of a handful of areas. Let me just share one more quickly with you, and it's called the metaverse. I'm not sure you have heard about this or know about it. It's, it's a virtual reality um, uh, um, a venue uh, and a capacity where men and women uh, of all, of all uh, nations that are able are coming into this virtual reality um, within and on the internet and computer and uh, they're actually um, migrating from the reality of living in this life and now spending more time that's available in a non-reality or a virtual reality a virtual reality and what is taking place again the explosion of technology here uh, what is taking place is that there are actually um, this this metaverse um, that was uh, uh, developed there actually is uh, digital uh, properties uh, there are digital paintings there is actually cities that are being developed and uh, and, uh, uh, and 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 here's what's happening is that people are actually buying uh, digital real estate that doesn't exist in the reality of the life you and I live in. They are buying digital uh, real estate, digital art, and a host of things. A piece of real estate uh, just sold in the, uh, in, uh, the uh, uh, metaverse, just sold for $21 million. Actual American dollars, someone involved in metaverse, the super world of virtual reality and moving into that, I won't get into the dynamics of how that's taking place, paid that kind of money. There's a real estate explosion not only happening here in terms of buying and selling within the reality of this nation, but in the virtual reality that's taking place within metaverse and super world, there is also likened that kind of movement and activity and actual real dollars that are being spent. I don't have, again, a great deal of time to show you, uh, but there is also a painting that was just sold on metaverse. Watch, a digital painting, $69 million dollars. It was sold for by someone within Metaverse, a virtual reality that we, people can go into and began to escape uh, the reality of the life that they're living here and now. And the migration of men and women globally that is moving towards this, what's called the super world or Metaverse, is so phenomenal that now you have large companies uh, pouring in and actually advertisements now are coming into metaverse and so we are seeing again this uh, unbelievable movement of technology into virtual reality where uh, millions of people are moving from uh, the uh, reality of trying to live in this life and trying to find pseudo uh, uh, happiness in a virtual capacity again buying real estate buying homes buying vehicles actually with tangible fiat currency that you and I have now a painting sold for 69 million dollars actually money for a virtual painting okay and so this without going into too much more detail again I can probably spend two hours anyway on each of these uh, uh, aspects of technology increasing and, and what is happening within the world that you and I live in. But this is what is taking place in terms of a portion of the increase of knowledge. Now, I get back to this area here uh, in terms of is God linked in? Is God uh, linked in? A gentleman by the name of Reed Hoffman actually developed what you and I know of called LinkedIn. It is a, uh, an American business, for those of you that don't know, of employment, 
orientated capacities online services that operate via websites, mobile apps, and it is a platform that professional uh, networking allows job seekers uh, to post uh, their resumes and employers to post their jobs. It's a very popular uh, uh, app and uh, known to probably almost all of you. And so, again, in terms of this understanding of, of uh, technology increasing and, and knowledge abounding more and more and more as we begin to see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the raptus uh, 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 taking place, we see again LinkedIn, and I oppose this question to you and I, are, uh, is, is God linked in with your life? Is God linked in uh, with your life. I want to suggest to you and I, um, since I have the chalk this morning, that many Christians uh, could find themselves looking to LinkedIn uh, for doors to open, and for connections to be made. Thus, they can be hired and they can be promoted and a host of those areas that LinkedIn in a natural capacity provides for an individual uh, like yourself and like mine. Now, hear me, hear me here. Uh, LinkedIn and, and the social aspects and, and the media aspects uh, in and of themselves, I'm not sharing that these are evil and shouldn't be used. They have their place and there is a place for them within the Christian's life. The underlying uh, question is, is God linked in your life or are these uh, areas of technology and social media, are they taking a, 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 a precedence over what your Bible says you and I should be doing first and foremost? foremost. LinkedIn and connections with people and companies and employers and who you know and all of those kinds of things certainly are uh, an opportunity that, watch, God can use. I want to make sure you hear me say that, that God can use LinkedIn. He can use social net. He can use the host of them. But I'm presenting this to you and I that the Christian could have a propensity that somehow LinkedIn, social net, and the host of those areas are going to actually be the vehicle that God may use to open these areas up in one's life. One's life. Now again, the Bible says in Luke 6, uh, 38, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that you and I should give, and here's what he said, it shall be given unto you, the law of reciprocation. He said, now, Steve, give unto me, and it shall be given unto you. Watch, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, you know this, shall men and women give into your life and give into your bosom. So we do see uh, that there is relationships that can and do provide a, a vehicle, an agency from God to you. God uses people to bless you, to open doors, to continue on, to, uh, to move his will in your life. Yes, God can use LinkedIn. God can use all of these areas uh, to bring uh, his will and his heart uh, and, and desires for you. Uh, shall men give in to your life and women, okay, the law of reciprocation. But uh, I think there are too many of us uh, that are looking to uh, these areas of LinkedIn and a host of things, and uh, we're not understanding fully uh, what God would have us in those capacities, of what God would have us in those capacities. And I, and I brought you today an example in the book of uh, Genesis of Joseph. Here, Joseph, a, a man who had the favor of God upon his life, Joseph, a, a, a man who walked upright before God and before man, and yet here he was incarcerated, your Bible says in Psalms 105, for over 13 years. 13 years. He had to ask himself, I'm sure why, how come, where is God, uh, how do I get out of this uh, incarceration and this prison sentence that I am in? And so watch what he did. He began to network. He began to talk to Potiphar, 
and began to share with him uh, because he had an avenue of connection with him. Watch, he was linked in to Potiphar, who was the CEO of uh, of the prison stockyard. Okay, and he began to link in and he began to share and send uh, Potiphar his resume as to open doors out of this prison and into the palace. And he shared that and he sent his resume through LinkedIn to uh, 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 Potiphar, the CEO of the prison yard. and, 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 And there was no movement. Nothing took place. There was no answer. There was nothing that was happening. And not only that, Joseph tried again to connect um, with the CEO of, 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 of uh, Egypt, uh, the butler. Uh, he was the, uh, the new Uber uh, <laughs> delivery driver. And he said, now, uh, Joseph, I'm giving you answers to this dream and the interpretation. So when you go tell Pharaoh what this means... And, and he's going to do this for you, and he's going to elevate you, uh, CEO of, of, of Uber uh, Eats. Uh, then I want you uh, to remember me here, for I helped you. And here's my resume. And so again, we see Joseph, if you allow me, he was linked in uh, to the CEO of Uber Eats, uh, the chief butler, and said, remember me, and uh, won't you think of me uh, when this uh, unfolds and the interpretation takes place within your life. You read in verse, I think, 23, where the Bible says this, that the chief butler did not remember Joseph and did not think of him. Okay, now here we are as Christians. There's, there's some of you, you're waiting on a job. Uh, you have an, a, a degree, you have a master's, you have a, a BA, you're an engineer, you're, a, you're an accountant, uh, you're um, whatever it might be. It has to do even with the relationships uh, uh, and the social media on uh, finding a husband and finding a wife and and all of the areas, watch, uh, uh, social media technology that are available to you and I today. Again, the propensity of many Christians is we are uh, going to believe that God will use them to open the doors up, to bring the wife, to bring the husband, to bring the job, Uh, to bring the answer, and you, uh, uh, listen, beloved, there is a time, and again, God can use those things, but this I do know, that God will, uh, uh, there will be a time where God won't allow any of those social uh, media platforms to give you an answer and to open a door. I know that's a tough one to swallow this morning because you've been waiting like Joseph. Uh, You've been desiring, you've prayed, uh, and there's nothing happened. And so you continue to uh, do the best you can with uh, uh, the applications. And again, that's not evil. But there will be a season and a time where God will not allow uh, any activity like Joseph and and begin to shut down uh, LinkedIn with all of those capacities, regardless of how good uh, the resume is, regardless uh, of what a great person for uh, that you are to get a wife or to get a husband on that on that area or that platform. He'll he won't allow activity to happen. Uh, why? Because if that continues where LinkedIn gives you the answer, uh, where that dating app uh, brings answers and dates for you, but nothing transpires, or, or any of those things, if that's the pattern, we can begin to look to those agencies that they're going to bring the answer to me. And so without God taking a season or a time to close those down and not allow any of those answers to come to you and I and any openings, Joseph, now Joseph had to really begin, watch, begin to pray even in a deeper capacity that he had ever had in his own life. The Bible again in the book of uh, Psalms shows us and tells us that even in his shackles and chains, that Joseph began to really deepen his prayer life and his relationship with the Lord himself. 
Beloved, I know you're praying. If you're watching this, you're a praying person. Uh, I know that's happening, but yet nothing's opened up. And you might be frustrated. You might be upset. You might be asking, God, where are you? Uh, what's happening? And then there's, you still keep sitting. And I, I should be having it. He got a job. She got one. He got a She got the. And all of those things that are happening, maybe it's your turn uh, where God is closing those down. Watch. And he's going to deepen the, uh, uh, the wealth and the watermark uh, and reservoir of his word, his spirit, his relationship through the avenue watch of prayer and intercession looking only to him, Jesus Christ. He said in the book of Revelation, I open doors no man can close and I'll close doors that no man can open. Somebody listening right now, watching right now, you are in that very same place and you haven't seen movement. You've done all of the right things and not Nothing has opened, nothing has transpired yet. God is drilling a deeper life in you. There is water down in reservoirs, aquifers, that he wants you and I to be able to access. And your relationship with him has begun to grow in a deepening capacity, in a deepening power and force where now God is linked in to you. He is your source. He is your current. He is your answer. He is the way maker. He is the deliverer. He is the promise keeper. He is all of those things and he doesn't want to be challenged and he doesn't want any competition even if it's an agency that he's allowed you to use in the past. That he's allowed you to, I need a shout and an amen out there all the way from uh, Willamette, Oregon all the way to Maine. That's, that's amazing in itself. That's amazing in itself. Uh, beloved, uh, we have some uh, real estate that we own, and, and, and some of them have wells, water wells. And uh, uh, it's interesting because some of them you drill down 70 feet, and you obtain water in a source. And sometimes the water is good. Uh, but uh, there is also deeper waters underneath the layers of the earth. You go down another 50 feet, 100 feet, and you get this, this, uh, this spring uh, that is, that is uh, pure and clear without uh, uh, any type of iron and those kinds of things. And so, and so uh, you know, if, if the driller doesn't realize that sometimes if, if that uh, drill goes down, there is a, there is a, 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 purer, a purer water, there is a, a deepening, there is a greater flow uh, and pressure of this water coming out of that particular, that particular well. You and I, the Bible says, John 4, uh, we are a well. And Jesus said unto uh, you and I that out of the innermost part of your being, of your well, shall flow rivers of living water. And not only when you and I get filled with his spirit, um, there is a deepening, a desire to take you and I water his word, water, his spirit, John 7, uh, uh, 47 and following. God wants to deepen that capacity in your life and mine. I'm telling you Bible right here and a portion of experiential uh, uh, knowledge concerning this principle right here that God himself wants to be linked into your life. He will shut down all of these social media capacities and not bring an answer to you even though you're qualified. Even though you're dreamboat Danny, there is no real girl for you that she's a saved Christian woman and, and you know what God's asking uh, for you and, and desiring for you in all of the areas that you and I are about. He'll close those down, Joseph, and say, I'm not going to let those work in your life this time. And now you're going to have to drill down and spend more. Grace will allow you and desperation will cry and call you to spend more time with me. And that drill of, of, of heartache, disappointment, and tears will cause you to pray and to deepen in your life and find a 
a, a greater flow of God's water, His Word, His Spirit, a greater flow within your life and a relationship that when this season happens again, you go straight to Him. Again, He is the one that opens the doors. He is the one that closes the doors. And I am going to dig deep again because God is the one, Joseph, that can open the doors to your palace. Wow, I wish I had a congregation in here on that one. We'd all be up running around. If you see me sweating, uh, I got lights here and that kind of thing. Plus, I haven't worked out a whole bunch, so you're getting to see me uh, lose weight and preach at the same time. <laughs> okay. Someone shout amen out there if you understand. Now, I know that's a challenge to you and I, but again, beloved... Think about Joseph in your Bible. This is what he went through. He went through. At least this, you and I have an example, and many of them like this, that we can draw from. Joseph had, he had no Bible. He was in the prison, okay? He was in the prison, and he had no Bible, he had no Bible. He didn't have a church to encourage him. He didn't have a preacher to say, you know what, this is how she rolls out. This is going to encourage a, a blah, blah, blah. He didn't have that. Again, the desperation and the desire and the capacities that there is nothing uh, and no relationship. Uh, again, what grace, what, uh, what favor isn't? God's favor isn't reliant upon personal connections. Again, we're talking what God's favor isn't. God's favor is not reliant upon personal connections. It's not, uh, it's not uh, 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 regulated by who you know and who is such a much. And they could pull the lever and they could open the door. God's favor isn't reliant upon connections within your life and mine. Did you hear that? And again, I want to encourage someone in that arena right now of doors that haven't opened, of situations that haven't shown themselves, and, and, you're, and, you're, and, and it's painful for you, beloved like Joseph, uh, allow that uh, time to be so beneficial and powerful that you allow it to drive you into deeper areas of prayer and searching God's heart and, and, and crying out to him uh, to open the door. If it's his will, uh, move this, bring this, show me, oh God, uh, and teach me uh, your ways and, and, and so that I might grow and, and deepen my life with you and deepen my life with you. Beloved, when I was in Mexico City with those 400, 500 delegates, um, many uh, poorer, uh, poor uh, countries and, uh, and churches, they look, watch now, and this is, uh, this is a situation that happens uh, often. They look to foreigners or ministers from the West that they know they're coming from a very wealthy country and probably uh, would have uh, monetary capacities to help them. They're endeavoring to uh, keep telling you I have a stack of cards in another arena uh, to help them uh, in terms of this area and this area and this area. Now, if we don't, as Christian men and women and leaders as well, uh, share with them that their first uh, 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 aspect of this isn't linked in to me or to that minister or to uh, that arena, it is God himself. I'm not, and I was sharing with them and teaching on one session, uh, look, uh, the foreigners aren't your provider. Quit looking and quit asking and quit begging for money for your church, for this and for that and for this and for that, and all of those things that are needful. Look to God and allow that area and that uh, desperation to drive you into the deeper places found in Him. He hears you. He, he's mindful of the lowly sparrow again that falls uh, from the nest. He knows what you need. He knows what's happening. Then why hasn't He? He's deepening your life brother 
Sister, he wants to deepen your life and shatter the shallowness of Christianity that is rampant within nations and deepen your life where there is a holy fire and there is a flow of God's spirit and water coming out of your life. Coming out of your life. You want a deeper anointing? Well, you know the average uh, uh, well looking for oil used to be around 36, 3700 feet drilling down before oil uh, began to come up out of most of the grounds. Well, uh, in some areas it actually has to go 10, 12, 14, 15,000 feet on the earth in some places even deeper to actually bring forth oil out of the ground, even deeper out in the seas. Okay, oil is a representation, you know, of God's Holy Spirit. This season where uh, 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 there is no, uh, wow. Okay, let's notice, let's notice. This season where there is nothing coming back from the connections that you and I are looking to, God, I pray that this can open up for Jim. And Jim would see me. He'd read my uh, resume. He may shut all that down. Okay. And he's going to grow not only the water, the word, and his spirit. If you let him, by grace, in your life, he is going to grow the anointing within your life. It will be a deepening so severe that only his spirit and the circumstance can take you there and bring you to it where now you tap into the sweet crude oil of the Holy Spirit within your life. Are you listening to me out there? I'm just going to tell you experientially what I'm sharing with you and what it says in your Bible. There is, again, there is the, a deepening desire of God himself to increase the watermark in your life, to increase the flow of that water, to increase the actual anointing within your life that can only come from these times of desperation, of tears, of heartache, of, of not understanding why, to bring you and I to the very place. LinkedIn is not your answer. Social net, not your answer. Facebook, not your answer. I don't care how many followers. I don't care how much the influence is. God will bring that to an end and to say, it is me and I'll have no competition in your life. You can grow that anointing, okay? And so now you come out of that season and then God opens the door. Now you're not looking first and foremost to, to that person and to that application and to that resume and to him and her and this and that and the disappointment. Can you imagine the disappointment of, of Joseph, okay, and Potiphar just, ah, okay, forget about it. I got a lot of prisoners and you're just one of them. Yeah, you've helped me out, but, you know, you know when you bless people, mm, don't get me going on that. When you bless people, it doesn't take long before they forget you even bless them. And they'll put a knife in your back. They'll put you on a cross and stretch you wide and hang you tall and whip you and say, kill him, kill him, kill him. And so, <laughs> and so can you imagine Joseph? Okay, and then he, again, he went to the CEO of, uh, of Uber Eats, the, the butler that had the wine and the drinks, and, and, uh, and he said, okay, now look, when, when this happens, hey, remember me, don't forget me. I've been through this, and the resumes aren't working, and the connections have been shut down, and what does it say? He forgot him and didn't remember him. Oh, I, I just, I'm on, I, this, this is right on point. For your life and mine and people going forward, that there is an anointing that can be deepened in your life by this situation if you allow the grace of God to draw you and to call you into that place. That anointing can grow in your life where now, now demons see the anointing on your life. You go into Starbucks, you go into Walmart, you go in. It wouldn't matter why. Listen, that oil is now inside of you. And now the demons themselves recognize the anointing that breaks their yoke. Ooh, I need a shout out there in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, let me kiss and tell a little bit. I know I'm extended play again. Uh, but uh, the, we've planned, or we've pastored three churches, okay? And the first church, uh, what Dean and I call, was a honeymoon church. We were there almost four years and had a beautiful uh, congregation that grew from a, a church plant in a cafeteria uh, into the gym and a host of things. And, and beloved, I, I can't remember if we even had maybe three problems in that entire four years. Everybody seemed to love me and Tina and the kids. And, and uh, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was a honeymoon church. And again, I didn't know the Bible. I just knew that God was calling me. Uh, well, I wasn't even sure that was happening. Um, but I was just obedient in that. And you should have seen us. I'm not going to get into the, uh, uh, the dynamics of, of, of putting signs out in the freeway and being rained on and yada, yada, yada. But listen, I would teach. And then the people, oh, that was awesome. And I didn't even know uh, really anything I was trying to teach. I still have some of those recorded cassettes, which I think if you heard those now, you would say heresy. And uh, <laughs> so, so, okay, so, so then uh, we moved to Seattle and uh, um, we began to pastor a large facility and a congregation, a large congregation, etc. Well, guess what? I'll try to be quick with this. Uh, when I began, uh, the honeymoon preacher Steve began to share and to teach in that particular church. Um, the people were uh, pretty seasoned, more so than I was, fairly young and, and didn't know again the Bible. Uh, but I do know this, that when I would teach, I recognized in that season, please listen, that whatever tiny, if at all, anointing that I had wasn't enough to break through in that congregation, into the lives of people, even in that environment. And watch, by His Spirit, I knew that. I can't tell you how. I can't tell you except I knew that I didn't carry what was needful in his oil, in his anointing to actually break through and to break the climate within that particular congregation and into the lives of God's people. And so it caused me to, by his grace, caused me, I would, I would run into the recording studio. Okay, it was soundproof. And beloved, I tell you the truth, I would wail. I would cry. I, I, that, uh, the increase of anointing, I'm nobody's hero, I'm on the path. But that isn't something a man or a woman can create in and of themselves. That is a work of God. And so it is going to him to, to drill a deeper and to bring forth a, a, a sweet oil uh, from my life that has the power to break through and to break into any environment, regardless of how caustic and negative it might be, and into the lives of God's people, changing them for his glory. And so it was months and months and months and years. And I began, I remember the first time that through all of the tears and the heartache and, and, and understanding my, my lack in that uh, arena, there came, beloved, I could even, I wrote down the date. There was a time about four years into that uh, nine-year uh, ministry uh, stay where the anointing of God came out of a deep place and broke down that darkened uh, uh, climate and culture in that particular service. And the word of God, regardless of the simplicity, carried an oil and anointing that began to move deeply into the lives of people. It was the same thing with deliverance. The first time someone came in for marriage counseling, we mentioned deliverance broke out and the demon within that girl literally laughed at me. Why? Because I didn't have the anointing to cast out a spirit in, in, in anybody's. I didn't even know those were in people at that time. All of that to say is, beloved, you are in a ripe opportunity for God to deepen you with water, His Word, His Spirit, and the anointing oil that is there for you. You and I can ask God, don't let me leave this hour, this season, 
without receiving everything you would have for me. And let the tears flow. Go into the recording room in the sound room and, and just wail. Huh? You won't have one of those. And let the neighbors know that you're doing deep, deep work with God. You never outgrow the process and the levels that are available by His Spirit, His water, and His oil in your life and mine. In your life and mine. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to stop here. Um, uh, I, I got, we didn't even get to finish what favor isn't. I'll close and underline this. Uh, I have uh, uh, six areas of what favor isn't. And again, to underline favor, God's favor does not need the right connections. Yes, God can use people to open doors. He can use all of the social capacities, uh, but again, there is a time where he'll close those down and declare to us, Revelation 3, 7, I am the one who opens doors that no man can close. I am the one who closes doors uh, that, no, <laughs> that no man uh, can, uh, can open. Beloved, and, and again, after uh, um, almost 30 years of ministry, I've never sent out mailers to other churches, other countries. I've never tried to, uh, I'm not saying it's evil, I just, I've never, I've never tried any of that. If God wants those doors open, if, if, if he wants that to take place, and he wants to distribute that kind of favor, then those doors will, will open, and they have. And you're a testimony, many of you, because we sent you to some of those. We sent you to some of those. Acts uh, 12 and 10 and following, Peter was locked in jail as a prisoner uh, for sharing the gospel. The Bible says that he was behind three iron gates that kept him from freedom. The jailer had a key, the governor had the authority, and the iron gates were impossible to penetrate. Peter didn't need a letter. Uh, he didn't need an opening. He didn't need anything from anybody. God sent an invisible messenger, uh, an angel that touched uh, his chains and touched his shackles and set him free. Beloved, again, you serve a mighty, awesome God. And he can open up every closed door that you're facing right now now maybe it's relational maybe it's emotional maybe it's financial maybe it's spiritual you have this deep uh, 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 you have this uh, 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 calling on your life and there hasn't been anything open yet well there's a difference between God's calling and God's commissioning uh, beloved use the time the opportunity to allow God to deepen you in those places of your life. It will impact uh, people. It will touch their lives. Uh, it will bring glory to God. And his favor will be spread abroad.